Hello everyone and welcome. In the last episode you could see that I got a new high mileage daily driver which is my Audi A6 Allroad. And today we are going to do the first things to it. The first thing we are going to do is change the rear air suspension because that is broken as you could see in the last episode. Secondly we are going to look at all the fault codes that the car has generated during its 400,000 km life. And lastly, we are going to try to lower the suspension using VCDS. So that's everything coming up on this episode. The left rear airbag on my Audi has a small hole in it, so overnight the car drops all the way to the ground. It makes the car look trashy and I'm afraid it might break the compressor in time. So today we are going to change both airbags in the rear. After putting the car on jack stands, the battery needs to be disconnected. With the wheels removed, I'm taking off the fender liner because it sits in the way of the bags. Now we can easily access the bag. Basically it does the same work as a spring would, but it uses air to absorb the shocks that go through the suspension. Taking the fender liner off revealed that there is some minor surface rust, which will need treatment so it doesn't get any worse. To take out the airbag we need to unbolt and remove some stuff, starting with disconnecting the electric parking brake. Then the anti-roll bar and the strut need to be unbolted. After those are loose, the airbag needs to be deflated, which is done by disconnecting the little airline in the back. Lastly, it needs to be unbolted from the bottom and then it can be removed. Now it's a matter of doing the same on the other side and then disassembly is done. I already did this a few weeks ago but to show you guys what's wrong with the bag, I'm going to put some pressure on it and submerge it underwater to expose the air leak. It is a very small air leak but it is enough to drop the Audi on its butt, so that's why it needs replacement. I got two new airbags because it's a bad idea to only replace one.
Basically for the install everything needs to be done in opposite order. The only difference is that the air fitting needs to be replaced. With the bag in I also put some rust inhibitor on the corrosion spots to prevent it from getting worse. The installed airbag is not pressurized yet, so to inflate it I'm starting the car and put it in lift mode for a few seconds. Yeah. Then after giving the fender liners a quick clean they can go back in as well. With the wheels on I dropped the car back on the ground but apparently there wasn't enough air in the system so the car dropped right onto the jack. So I had to start the car to lift her up. A few days later she kept her ride height, which means that no more air leaks are present. So the air suspension is changed but I noticed that the car is still sitting to one side and I think that is due to the height sensors that need to be recalibrated. Just to be sure we're going to measure if there is difference in the rear. The ride height is about half a centimeter off but the car is not on flat ground, so my measurement is not really precise. However it is a good indication that the sensors need to be recalibrated. I was kind of expecting that we would need to recalibrate the height sensors and that's why I got this, which is a VCDS. Uh, a VCDS is an amazing tool if you've got a Volkswagen Audi Group car, uh, but we'll talk more about this later. First I'm going to pull in the car because we need to be on flat ground to recalibrate the height sensors. So before we are going to start working with VCDS, I have to give a massive thank you to the people over at obdwarenas.nl which is a Dutch website that sells a lot of OBD related products. They were kind enough to give me a unit to use for this video and just to try it out. Um, and so I could make a video for you guys. So if you want to check out their website, they sell a lot of OBD related stuff that can come in very handy not only for Volkswagen and Audi cars but for every brand especially for the Dutch people this might be interesting. I also want to mention that a genuine VCDS cable with software can be quite expensive and I wasn't really sure if it would be justified for me to buy one but now that I've used it a little bit and looked into it I'm definitely going to buy one for myself. I know it's possible to get cheap knockoff cables uh, and cracked software but I've read a ton of horror stories of people messing up entire control modules so I'd rather spend a little more on a genuine cable than to mess up something really expensive on my car. So thank you again to the people at OBD Warenas and now let's get into what VCDS is capable of. VCDS is a diagnostic software developed by Rostec and it is for Volkswagen and Audi Group cars. It basically allows you to do anything that a dealer can with their fancy scan tools. If we take a look at the home screen you can see that it allows you to access every individual module that is installed on the vehicle, which to me is the most exciting part. It allows you to measure and data log every value that the car is equipped to measure. So it allows you to diagnose problems but also calibrate sensors and recode stuff. The possibilities are endless. 
The next big function it has is the OB2 scan tool, which has the same function as an ordinary scan tool, but much better and more precise. Another cool function to note is the gateway scan. It scans every module that is installed on the car and it shows the possible errors that they have logged. So you get a quick overview of potential issues. To be able to run the software, you obviously need a laptop or a PC and an OBD2 adapter to USB. So now let's hook this baby up. The light will go from blue to green, which means there is a connection. Then I'm opening up the software. I'm new to the VCDS, so I was a little intimidated, but luckily the kit came with a big fat manual to guide me. Okay, so I'm kind of nervous right now. We're going to check what fault codes this car has. And this thing has had like a check engine light for about a year that has been due to the swirl flaps, but I don't know if there has anything been added that would cause a check engine light as well. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. To see what causes the check engine light, I'm using the OBD scan tool option. After a little while of scanning, it shows what is wrong. So I guess there's only one code and that is um, because of the swirl flaps, but that is actually a problem we have known about for quite some time. So I'm actually surprised that's the only thing. I was thinking there might be another problem, um, but actually there's not, so that's pretty good news. So now I think we can get on with calibrating the um, height sensors. I also did a quick auto scan of all the modules, which revealed no major issues. So on to calibrating the height sensors. So before we are going to calibrate the height sensors, the first thing I'm going to do is check the tire pressures. Uh, so to make sure that those are even, because those will influence the ride height. And then I will measure every uh, corner for its height. So we get like a starting point uh, for our measurements. Luckily the car is capable of showing tire pressures through the MMI. So it's a quick check. After inflating the tires, I'm measuring all four corners of the car so I can see how much it will have lowered in the end. To start the calibration, the car needs to be running and have locked doors. Then I'm going into the level control module for the calibration. First I need to type in the security password, which is 31564, which allows me to go into the menu we need. Then I click on adaptation to calibrate the height sensors. In the menu you can select channels. The first channel is the left front. It tells you to wait while the car goes up and down to a certain level. When the weight turns into value, the corner's right height needs to be measured from the center of the hub to the wheel arch. That value needs to be entered in the new value box and that way the car knows what real height it is at. Then press test, the car should allow it and then go on to the next channel. When channel 4 is done, go to channel 5 to confirm everything by typing in 1 for a new value, then test and then save and you're done. The car should automatically level itself out if your measurements were correct. I took some measurements and all the four corners are at the same height. So now we can start tricking the height sensors so everything gets a little bit lower. So to lower the car we need to do the same process but instead of entering the real measured value we add the amount of millimeters to that value. For example if the car is sitting at 380 mils you go to 400 mils. 
That way the car will drop 2 centimeters. I tried going as low as I could, but the car wouldn't let me go down more than 3 centimeters on each corner, but for my purposes that should be enough. After the process is done, the car should start to lower itself and it's easy as that. This is the final product. I have lowered it 30 mils in the front and 20 in the rear and it looks way better in my opinion. I'm glad she looks less like a Datmobile and more like something I would drive around. Now I need to save up for some bigger and wider wheels and then her look should be dialed. I couldn't be happier with how she's sitting right now. I'm not really a stance boy, uh, I just like to keep it a little bit more classy. Uh, and I think for daily driving this is a perfect height. So we dropped three centimeters in the front and two in the rear. But for the stands boys that are watching right now, I am going to try to drop it down all the way by deflating the airbag. So I'll just do some research on uh, the computer and then maybe we can drop her down to the ground all the way. For the level control module, I found a command that drops out almost all the air from the bags. So let's see how that looks. That is how low as she can go. The body is resting entirely onto the tires and I have to admit it looks really cool. I've never been a fan of stanced cars uh, because I'm more of a performance oriented person but it is interesting to see how low it is. This shows how amazing VCDS is as a tool and I hope I can purchase a unit for myself soon. So that is the end of today's episode. I had a lot of fun doing this and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as well. If you did, please consider subscribing. It really helps me and it keeps me motivated to keep making videos. So until next time. Oh, and by the way, for the people who are watching for the other cars, don't worry, next episode we'll get working on the old stuff again. <laughs>